Tell me the last time you saw a lead couple in a romantic blockbuster where the man was shorter than the woman. Not only that, but that the man was an Asian man. <laughs> an Asian man and shorter than the woman. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back. Um, it's a Merle and Aria special today. Today, we're going to be talking about why you don't typically see couples that look like us out in the wild, but especially mm. in media. I was inspired to do this video because, well, we went on a road trip together, which is another whole video, but we did, we went watch on a Watch it, a lot of fun. Yeah, watch it, a lot of fun. I got urine on my hands. A lot of urine. Anyway, while we were on that trip, we had a night in Colorado. We saw some wild elk, which were gorgeous, and we were both amazed by them. And then that night, he ordered elk sausage along with like four other kinds of meat in that lodge. Oh, it's beautiful. Right? I'm just wondering where, how this is tying to this. This is the tangent. This is a tangent, right? <laughs> that was the night that we had this conversation that sparked the idea for the video. Oh, oh, good memory. While we were sitting there eating dinner, we started talking about how we personally don't see other couples that look like us because mm. whenever we were on the road trip whenever we would see couples where the guy was shorter than the girl we'd be like oh my god look there's another one it's like a wild like rare mm -hmm. pokemon i already brought up that it's rarer to see uh, a, a couple where the woman is taller mm -hmm. and the man is shorter but even rarer to see a couple where the woman is taller, the man is shorter, and the man is Asian and the woman is white. I bet you there are probably less than 5,000 couples in the entire world where the woman is taller than the man and the woman is white and the, and the man is Asian. This is a completely arbitrary number. There's no research to back this up. Yeah, I think there's a layer to the reason people got excited about us getting together because mm -hmm. they're like, wow, we don't really see couples Absolutely. that look like that that yeah. often. Mm -hmm. Obviously there was the whole, oh, you know, their coworkers, their friends, that, that excitement. But I think also, I remember based on the comments, especially like in the how I fell in love my coworker video, the comments on that one. There were so many comments from people saying, oh, this gives me hope as a, you know, as an Asian male or just as a, as a shorter guy, this gives me hope. That night we had the conversation. We're like, wow, we both are like getting a lot of these messages from people in comments. And also we ourselves feel like we are a little bit of an anomaly. Mm -hmm. um, so we just kind of wanted to talk about why that yeah. is. I mean, it's really just about our experiences. Again, Absolutely. this yeah. isn't like, we're not specialists in this topic mm -hmm. of interracial relationships, inter height. <laughs> so you know, so you know, my experience I feel is is a unique one because I grew up overseas, so I, I kind of wasn't really subjected to at least the full force of how Asian males have been portrayed in mass media, pop culture, you know, movies, television, and not even that, you know, historically when it comes to like propaganda during the Vietnam War, you know, the the. World War II, dating even further back when we had Chinese immigrants coming into into the country. However, obviously, even grew up overseas, there there were kind of some cultural expectations. Like it's kind of expected that you would date someone who just from the, within the same nationality or culture or religion, uh, just just because you know there'd be more understanding. You know, because the families would understand each other a little bit more. And that's kind of obviously a more traditional mindset. And luckily, my parents have been, you know, they, they, you know, they're happy to have me love whoever I want. I remember if I were looking to date in, in Asia, you know, you'd most likely be dating someone else that's Asian. So here in the U.S., it was interesting to be able to date people with a whole vast array of cultural backgrounds. Because obviously, I've dated people from a whole host of different, you know, ethnicities and backgrounds. Um, and for me, ultimately, you know, it's more of a personality thing. Uh, you know, they gotta get my humor. They gotta get the humor. It's a real rare breed. Yeah. But it's interesting because obviously, while I was so open to, to dating people willy-nilly. On the flip side, other people may have been hesitant to date an Asian male, you know? Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know the statistic. I read somewhere once uh, that, you know, Asian males have it amongst the hardest when it comes to dating apps, wow. Asian men. And, you know, on my time on dating apps, I have found that to kind of be true. I got matches and stuff like that, but I wouldn't say it was like a bounty of matches. Uh, but then again, maybe they, maybe they just didn't they didn't like my my jokes on my profile. I don't know. But then that turns into the whole topic of you know how Asian males have been portrayed in media and stuff like that. Because you know, Asian women have been over sexualized to an extent. You know, oh, you know yeah. they, they've been fetishized. Uh, you know, they've been viewed as exotic, which is its own uh, other can of worms. And of course, there are some outliers. And even recently, you know, you know we're seeing Asian Americans take the lead in, in, in movies like Stephen Yeun, of course, and Henry Golding beautiful guys, you know, seeing Taylor Swift have a, an Asian romantic interest in her Willow music video. Fantastic, you know, so it's great to see all this change, but obviously there's still the very long history uh, that is going to take a long time for that to kind of be, you know, erased from the subconscious of the American populace and beyond, not even just here in America, right? Because uh, Western media dictates, for the most part, media around the world. Yeah, I mean, piggybacking off what you're saying now is like, I grew up in the U.S., 
I was born on Cape Cod, very white place. I then, when I was 12, we moved to Western Mass, still pretty damn white. So I didn't grow up among a very diverse community. So I think right off the bat, that sets you mm. up to kind of see white people as the default, which is not even anywhere near true and not good. I mean, like, it's something that I have learned and grown through the older I get, the more I now, you know, when I moved to New York City, much more diverse. And so it was eye opening for me because I feel like in a way I lived in a little snow globe. I mean, it doesn't help when not only do you live in a not diverse community, but you also are fed TV shows and movies that are promoting white people in general as the default. Any, I mean, if you look at all the great, like, classic romantic tales, some to name a few, Gone with the Wind, The Notebook, Titanic, it's just like all of these major storylines that I was watching as a kid and as a teenager, mostly like white cast, white leads. Um, so you kind of like in your mind, even subconsciously, expect to see white people in lead roles. Mm. It just further cements the idea that like that's the norm. The more I'm educating myself and calling myself out for some of the unconscious bias that inevitably will live within me, it's mm -hmm. like I realize how flawed that is and what a misrepresentation that is of the world. Like this isn't reality. You know, reality TV is some of the most unrealistic shit you see. Like the cast, people are always wealthy, they're usually white. Even if they're old, they look young. It's like all of these expectations are so unrealistic Anyway, I'm going on a real tangent now. It's not a tangent, it's all, it's all applicable. All of that said, I feel like I didn't think of dating you as any sort of an issue. Or I didn't have to take any pause for dating someone who wasn't white. The thing that made me nervous was the fact that Aria is shorter than me. Mm -hmm. And not just my height. He's shorter than me, like two inches, two and a half inches mm -hmm. shorter than me. It shouldn't matter, but let's, let's journey back to expectations in society and media. Tell me the last time you saw a lead couple in a romantic blockbuster where the man was shorter than the woman. And not only that, but that the man was an Asian man. <laughs> an Asian man and shorter than the woman. I mean, there are roots to this stuff. Like, look at the Disney princesses and the prince that they end up with. It is you. I couldn't find a single Disney princess that ended up with a prince that was shorter than her until Up came out and she's not even a princess. One show that we love is Love Island. I mean, we've binged through seasons one through six of Love Island UK since this pandemic started. And this one episode we were watching recently, this, these girls were saying, it was like the first episode, and they were saying like, you know, what's your type? What's your type? And the, the answer is always tall, dark, and handsome. That was pretty good, right? No, 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 not that bad. But the other thing one girl said was like, what's your type? And the other girl said, light eyes, dark hair taller than me, and the other girl was like, well, that's everyone, right? Well, actually, the acting was, was, was pretty good that time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All I'm thinking about is like younger people that are seeing these messages, and then when you hear someone say, you know, taller than me, that's everyone's type, like, that's setting a benchmark that doesn't really need to be there. For me, when we first started dating, I was self-conscious, partially because of my own height. Growing up, I was always tall and awkward and really skinny. My mom would say I wasn't awkward, but I was. I have never dated anyone that's shorter than me. It's always been something that I've like written off. We mention it frequently that like, if it, we had met over a dating app, I, we probably never would have ended she up together. She, I would have swiped right, she would have just tossed her phone in the garbage, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, because there's like a certain expectation and you're, when you're on dating apps, you feel like you can like pick and choose and mold people however you want. That's the way of putting it. But knowing myself, knowing my insecurities around being taller than a lot of other women and men, I would have probably said six foot and above. So Arya wouldn't have met that benchmark. He probably wouldn't even have turned up on my queue. Mm. And we never would have met. Like, How that's sad is that? so sad. So that's why I try to encourage my friends that are still single to branch out of what your type is. I feel like types are just, they piss me off. All you're doing is limiting yourself. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like your type is gonna end up being old and wrinkly eventually, and their <laughs> hair is gonna be gray or gone. So your type won't be there forever. I get it if you're like particularly attracted to a certain type of person, sure. But writing off everyone else just because that's your type is only directly affecting you and your ability to find a meaningful connection. Mm. I challenge my friends because a lot of the times, I mean, all of my friends, all of my girlfriends are shorter than me. Every single one. There are none of them that are even my height. And so when I'm around them and they're on their app, the dating app, and they're like, oh, you know, he's cute, but 5'11's a little short for me. I'm like, you're fucking 5'3". Why do you care if he's not five, six foot? Like, it makes no difference. And I get defensive about it. It's not like even the, really their fault. It's again, it's the conditioning and the normalcy of being like, oh, 
too short for me. Like, gotta pass. In this case, these people that they're looking at are still taller than them by several inches, but they're still not tall enough for society, so not acceptable. Chew on that. Anyway, I don't yell at them like I'm yelling right now when they say stuff like that. I'm just fired up. What I do say to them is like, you know, how do you think that makes me feel? I've called a few people out in the past. They're just like, first of all, Arya's not six foot. He's also shorter than me. So like when you make comments like that, it makes me feel like somehow my relationship isn't acceptable to you or isn't cool to you or isn't sexy to you because of that. I think we could all make a better effort to stop proliferating these superficial standards because ultimately if you say you want a really caring relationship, you want a true connection with someone, but you're limiting yourself and you're cutting people out because of what society thinks, not even what you think, but because of the conditioning from society, you're only affecting yourself negatively. Like, you know, just like writing someone off because you think other people aren't gonna think it's cool that you like that person is only gonna harm you at the end of the day. All of this to say, please don't be scared. Please don't be frightened by my passion. It's only because I know through experience now that it does you some good to challenge the thoughts, the inner chatter that you have telling you someone's not good enough by society standards. You know, if you have a really strong connection with someone, but something's holding you back, just look into why and think about whether it's really worth you passing off the opportunity at love. It's to her point, you know, as you're looking outside of height, look outside of race too, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you know, these are, a lot of them are subconscious, unconscious biases that, you know, we've been fed through media, through history, through pop culture. And hopefully this video, you know, like, I, you know, we're not experts in it, but hopefully our relationship uh, uh, can be a contribution to the dialogue and give you proof that it's possible. Yeah. You know? Uh, and that it's normal and that it is acceptable. And the only ones telling us that it's not is marketing across media, about race, about height, about everything. Heteronormativity, don't even get me started. This woman got fired up today, huh? Yeah. She got fired up, she got on a little podium. She was banging her gavel. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Any other like topics, hot button things you want us to chat about, we'd be happy to. Just let us know in the comments below. And uh, with that said, challenge your inner chatter. Have these conversations with your loved ones. Have these conversations with your friends, with your partners. If you're making movies and stuff, put different people as the leads. You know, let's change it up and get more progressive people. Date an Asian. <laughs> Find a gentle giant. <laughs>